Hello again, everyone. Welcome to our daily devotion for Monday, January 22nd, 2024. Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's Word today, as together we grow in our faith and in our knowledge of Jesus Christ as our Savior. Today we begin with Psalm 112. Psalm 112. Hallelujah! Happy is the person who fears the Lord, taking great delight in his commands. His descendants will be powerful in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, compassionate, and righteous. Good will come to the one who lends generously and conducts his business fairly. He will never be shaken. The righteous one will be remembered forever. He will not fear bad news. His heart is confident, trusting in the Lord. His heart is assured. He will not fear. In the end, he will look in triumph on his foes. He distributes freely to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted in honor. The wicked one will see it and be angry. He will gnash his teeth in despair. The desire of the wicked leads to ruin. Yesterday, Joel introduced us to this horrible plague of locusts that was afflicting the nation of Israel. Today, he's going to continue to talk about that uh, plague of locusts and also very specifically issue a call of call to repentance from the Lord to the people. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the residents of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. In fact, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and total darkness, like the dawn spreading over the mountains, a great and strong people appears such as never existed in ages past and never will again in all the generations to come. A fire devours in front of them, and behind them a flame blazes. The land in front of them is like the Garden of Eden, but behind them it is like a desert wasteland. There is no escape from them. Their appearance is like that of horses, and they gallop like war horses. They bound on the tops of the mountains. Their sound is like the sound of chariots, like the sound of fiery flames consuming stubble, like a mighty army deployed for war. Nations writhe in horror before them. All faces turn pale. They attack as warriors attack. They scale walls as men of war do. Each goes on his own path, and they do not change their course. They do not push each other. Each proceeds on his own path. They dodge the arrows, never stopping. They storm the city. They run on the wall. They climb into the houses. They enter through the windows like thieves. The earth quakes before them. The sky shakes. The sun and moon grow dark, and the stars cease their shining. The Lord makes his voice heard in the presence of his army. His camp is very large. Those who carry out his command are powerful. Indeed, the day of the Lord is terrible and dreadful. Who can endure it? Even now, this is the Lord's declaration. Turn to me with all your heart with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Tear your, tear your hearts, not just your clothes, and return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in faithful love, and he relents from sending disaster. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, so you can offer a grain offering and a drink offering to the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Announce a sacred fast. Proclaim a solemn assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. Assemble the aged. Gather the infants, even babies nursing at the breast. 
Let the groom leave his bedroom and the bride her honeymoon chamber. Let the priests of the Lord, let the priests, the Lord's ministers, weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, have pity on your people, Lord, and do not make your inheritance a disgrace, an object of scorn among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? When the Jewish people rejected Jesus as the Savior, that opened up opportunities for non-Jewish people to hear about Jesus and by God's grace come to faith in him. Now, they, the non-Jewish people, have an opportunity to reach out again to those Jewish people so that God's people, both Jews and Gentiles, might all be united in faith through the working of the Holy Spirit. I ask then, has God rejected his people? Absolutely not. For I too am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham from the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. Or don't you know what the scripture says in the passage about Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel? Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars. I am the only one left. They are trying to take my life. But what was God's answer to him? I have left 7,000 for myself who have not bowed down to Baal. In the same way, then, there is also a, at the present time a remnant chosen by grace. Now, if by grace, then it is not by works. Otherwise, grace ceases to be grace. What then? Israel did not find what it was looking for, but the elect did find it. The rest were hardened. As it is written, God gave them a spirit of stupor, eyes that cannot see and ears that cannot hear to this very day. And David says, let their table become a snare and a trap, a pitfall and a retribution to them. Let their eyes be darkened so that they cannot see and their backs be bent continually. I ask then, have they stumbled so as to fall? Absolutely not. On the contrary, by their transgression, salvation has come to the Gentiles to make Israel jealous. Now, if their transgression brings riches for the world, and their failure riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their fullness bring? Now I am speaking to you, Gentiles. Insofar as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my mystery, my ministry, if I might somehow make my own people jealous and save some of them. For if their rejection brings reconciliation to the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? Now, if the first fruits are holy, so is the whole batch. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. Now, if some of the branches were broken off, and you, the wild olive branch, were grafted into them, and have come to share in the rich root of the cultivated olive tree, do not boast that you are better than any of those branches. But if you do boast, you do not sustain the root, but the root sustains you. Then you will say, branches were broken off so that I might be granted in, grafted in. True enough, they were broken off because of unbelief, but you stand by faith. Do not be ignorant, but beware, because if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. And therefore, Consider God's kindness and severity, severity toward those who have fallen, but God's kindness toward you, if you remain in his kindness. Otherwise, you too will be cut off. And even they, if they do not remain in their unbelief, will be gra granted, grafted in, because God has the power to graft them in again. For if you were cut off from your native wild olive tree and nature and against nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen.
Thank you so much for spending this time with me in God's word today. May the Lord richly bless your day. And I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow.